Hi everybody, it's Sheer. Today I'm going to make this um, quick, short and sweet video to help you understand the BLAST assignment, um, which is due the week before spring break, so you have enough time to do it, I promise. <laughs> um, first I'm going to show you how to find it. Here is your, in this case mine, but this is what your TA's Elms page should look like, so you can just click on assignments right here and click on blast. Oop. Okay, here we go. All right, so in this text box are um, all of your instructions and also there's an introduction that contains um, a lot of really, really handy background information that I would highly suggest you read through because it will really, really help you with the assignment. Um, and then when you scroll past the introduction, there's the actual instructions for what you have to do. And as you're going through the instruction, they flow intuitively with the BLAST answer sheet, which is what you're handing in, um, either on Elms or on paper, but this is what you're actually filling out. So I'm not going to take you through the assignment. What I'm going to do is take you through the BLAST website and show you what it's used for, how it's used, um, and basically what you're going to be doing. So. Here is a BLAST website. BLAST stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, and basically it is a database for DNA. Um, they have full genomes of humans, mice, and lots of other organisms that kind of present um, reference genomes to any gene that you want to study. So in this case, what's going to happen is you're going to be given um, a sequence of DNA, and you're not really going to know where it's from, and you have to kind of use BLAST to figure out what organism is from, what other um, genomes and sequences it aligns to, what protein it codes for, and so on. So let me give you an example. Let's say I'm given this DNA sequence and I want to know what organism it's from, what protein it codes for, what the heck it is. <laughs> so I would use BLAST to do that. So I can basically copy it and um, search it in here. So there are a few different um, basic search tools under BLAST. Um, the one I want to start with is Nucleotide BLAST. This is one of the ones that you guys are going to have to use. And Nucleotide BLAST is searching a nucleotide database using a nucleotide query. And what I have is a nucleotide query because that's what I'm inputting. So basically this means that my input is going to be a nucleotide sequence, check, and the output is going to be a matching nucleotide sequence from one of these reference genomes. So let's start with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter the sequence right here. Make sure that there are no spaces um, or enters, but these enters are kind of like default in the sequence, but don't make another enter or anything like that. Um, then I'm going to go into search uh, choose search set and change this to NCBI genomes chromosome and that's just to avoid redundancy uh, you don't really have to worry about that and then you're going to click on somewhat similar sequences and then click last now um, this is a tool that lots and lots of scientists use um, so during the day and sometimes even during the night you can see that this search is taking a while for me, it's taken up to half an hour at some of the busiest times and sometimes even longer. So I would recommend doing these searches ahead of time and then kind of leaving them open, letting them do their thing. Um, definitely don't leave this um, until, you know, the day before it's due because these searches can take quite a while. Luckily for us, I've done it ahead of time. Um, and this is what the output looks like. So I'm just going to take you through what you're looking at here. Um, it looks a little weird. Um, but up here you can get important information like your query length, uh, 887 bases. Uh, this, uh, each of these lines represent an output sequence. So each line is a different matching sequence. Um, here is my query from base 1 to base 887. And I can see where along my query uh, the outputs match up. So you can see this number one up here matches from the very first base to the very last base. That's why it's in a red color because greater than or equal to, so 200 or more than 200 bases match up. So you can see that red is a color that we really like to see because it means that we have a lot of matching bases. On the other hand, check out this pink one down here 
it only matches, um, you know, up uh, between this space and this space. And that's why it's pink, only 80 to 200 um, bases match. So these aren't as uh, likely matches. So you can see that red is a really good color. Black we really don't want because it means that it's not a good match at all. As I move down, um, I see each of these sequences listed out by what they are. And it looks like my number one match is Homo sapiens chromosome Y. Um, so it's something that aligns to chromosome Y in uh, humans. And as I move down, I can see, you know, other sequences that match less and less and less. And as I move down, these are the sequences that hardly matched at all. Um, just some really relevant information here on the side. Um, score is proportional to how much matching you have. So you can see for 100% um, matches, I have a higher score. For 29% matches, I have a much lower score than the initial 1600. So score is proportional to your match strength. E value is inversely proportional to your match strength. So uh, a zero means that you're as matched as you possibly can be. And the higher your E value is, the less matching you are. So that's what these values mean. If I click in here, I can see my alignment, uh, which you guys are gonna have to provide your TAs with for grading. Here is my query sequence. Here's the first line, here's the second line, and so on. And underneath it is um, the sequence of what I just clicked into, so Homo sapiens chromosome Y. So basically, I just clicked into this guy, and it took me down here, so here's that sequence. And you can see, based on these lines, every base that they match at. So they really do match at 100% of the 887 bases. Well, that's all well and good, but I want to know what protein my sequence codes for. So now I'm going to go into a different search, which is BLASTX, where I search a protein database using a nucleotide query. So I'm going to go in, input my sequence, not change anything, and click BLAST again. And I'm not going to do this search right now because that's going to take a really long time. But this is what your result is going to look like. You can see pretty much the same type of result with the added information of what protein I'm looking at, which is really interesting. So this is the name of the protein. Um, if you're not a geneticist, you might not recognize the sequence of letters. But if you Google it, it'll tell you that basically what you're looking at is the SRY gene or the gender determining gene, the sex determining gene on the Y chromosome. So that's really cool that now I can see what protein this codes for. So there it is. There it is. And there's my first sequence, which is red, matches almost 100%. You see it's a 78% match, 451. That's a relatively high score and a pretty low E value of three times 10 to the negative 157. So I know that sex determining region Y protein is a likely find. And here is the translated protein of my query and the translated protein of the subject that I just clicked on. And I can see that they match pretty well. The last thing that I might want to do, let's go back here, is what if I get a protein sequence and I want to know if it is the same protein as what this code's for? Well, I can copy and paste that into Protein Blast which searches a protein database using a protein query. Once again, I'm going to input that here, press blast, and that's going to lead me to this result. As I can see, most of my queries are pink, which isn't so good. Um, I can see that um, I'm actually looking at a human immuno immunodeficiency virus, HIV protein here. Looks like RT, which I know is reverse transcriptase. And yeah, it looks like my highest uh, matching sequences are all reverse transcriptase. So I would conclude that this protein that I just put in is probably not <laughs> from the same gene that the initial nucleotide sequence was. So there you have it, a very basic overview. Um, I just told you all of the skills that you guys are going to have to know for this assignment. Um, it's going to require, you know, some critical thinking and answering questions. But as long as you have 
these skills down and are able to analyze your results, know what you're looking at when you're looking here, you should be absolutely fine. So if you have any more questions, ask your TAs and I hope that this video helped you. Good luck.